Hi, boys and girls. I'm so excited to read to you today a book called In the Land of Milk and Honey, which is written by Joyce Carol Thomas. The waiting train huffs. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And I worry, worry, worry. Hissing wheels. Hiss, hiss, hiss. And I'm afraid we'll miss, miss, miss. The train. Then the whistle sounds long and lonesome, and then the conductor sings, all aboard. I ease myself back in the window seat and breathe in as the train breathes out. We're on our way, on our way, to the land of milk and honey. Daddy says, if the lemons are as big as oranges, if the oranges are as big as grapefruits, if you bite into a strawberry and taste heaven in your mouth, why, you're in California, the land of milk and honey. Mama says, if the redwoods are tall as giants, if golden bears fish like men, and quail fly higher than eagles, you know you're in the land of milk and honey. And so we ride into early afternoon, past quick and slow stepping lizards, basking hood-eyed on dazzling rocks. We ride into late afternoon, past a snake whose body is a pen writing calligraphy on the paper dry earth. We ride into dusky evening, past a cactus raising hairy arms to catch the last light from the falling sun. My brothers play marbles in the middle of the aisle. They're jittery things skittering and hiding under Mama's feet. They're tiger eyes, surprising two men playing dominoes. The train lurches and sends them spinning back. Staring marble-eyed at me, my sister unwraps a chopped egg sandwich. I wash my half down with grapeette soda pop, the bottle of streaked with marbles of cold. In the morning, I wake up early enough to see California, spreading its sands of welcome, and I catch the desert dance of a coyote chasing a rabbit through the tumbling sagebrush. Now the sand turns to rich earth. Up and down the windy valley, migrant workers sweating through red bandanas run up and down the rows, carrying boxes of tomatoes on their heads. Not one falls. Up and down the windy valley, grape cutters shaded by green vines cut red grapes from their stalks, freeing pungent aromas and mariachi songs out into the atmosphere until they make the air delicious. Up and down the windy valley, workers in the onion fields unbend their backs to wave back at me, smiling on the traveling train, and I'm glad I'm here. Finally, we reach the city, where the ships sit, anchored in the coastal waters, like iron mountains docked in the bay. Look at the people, I whisper, and mimic the rustling way folks swish down the street, in the fine design of their clothes. Look at the people and their fascinating faces. Look at the people, all ages, all races. At the welcome party, limber-legged dancers shimmy in and out of each other's arms, and ever-changing rhythms call the feet to follow the beat here in this land of milk and honey. In the old mission building, arced in the tile and stucco, I sing in the stained glass choir, where the music swings, and every voice rings, with its own true sound. Oh, listen, can't you hear the harmony? Here in the land, the land of milk and honey. In Ginger's restaurant, Mama pours hot milk into mugs of shaved chocolate, then swizzles in cinnamon sticks. A Mexican concoction, she explains. At the next table, a couple shares jasmine tea in a steaming glass. Across the street, a boy tears African bread, his fingers sopping it in peanut stew. I lean over and take another sip of my luxurious drink, when everything I taste seems spoon-sweetened with honey, and mmm escapes my mouth. Beyond the bay, mountains topped with ice cream snow rise, reaching toward the cloud-powdered sky in the land of milk and honey.
and we stay. That's the end, boys and girls. Now time for follow-up questions.